So now let's <clears throat> jump over here. We have our external contour. Um, I'm going to quickly just identify the shadow shape. Light is coming from this angle right here and falling on that cylinder. So I'm going to quickly shade in. You can shade with the angle of the actual object as we've been discussing. There are different ways of, ways of shading. So um, you don't have to always go with the angle of the object. You can do more of a mass drawing, but uh, we are for our purposes at this point going to shade with the angle of the object because we're really emphasizing volumetric form. That's one of the things we're really concerned with at this point. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the background, and I just want to move quick here. going to erase away just kind of soften that transition a bit and let's reinforce that external contour strengthen the background like that and let's identify if the lights come from here the highlight see how the highlight is set in right here and it doesn't come in contact <clears throat> with the external contour the highlight right here is not going to hug the side of the cylinder you never have a highlight that sits or seldom you seldom have a highlight that sits right on the contour you really want to put that highlight within so you remember this number three that little half tone that hugs the rim on the light side same over here, you'll have that little delicate half tone, then the highlight, then back to a half tone over here. And I will strengthen some of the shapes here, just make it a little bit more legible. And you can even leave some of those volumetric lines on top of your gradations. If you are working and you want to go back and forth with your eraser, um, that's a shorthand way that I have for just getting something to kind of move quickly. As I go eraser, and then I'll put back in some volumetric lines just to really strengthen the form. And then right after I put those volumetric lines in, <clears throat> I will go back with my eraser and chew back into it a little bit. So it's kind of back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And I know a lot of, um, friends with a lot of professional painters, whether they are landscape artists, um, still life painters, conceptual kind of like imaginative painters, whatever they might be. And the back, forth, back, forth aspect of drawing and painting. Um, in the beginning, it's a frustration to all of us. We want to just kind of get it done in the first felt, you know, in one fell swoop, we want to get the whole thing. And we're a little bit frustrated by the back forth, back forth aspect. 
But as time goes by, you realize that the back forth, back forth element is drawing and painting. If you want to get away from that, then you really probably don't, you probably have to leave the act of creating in uh, two or three dimensions. So you kind of learn to appreciate it even, and you work it into your process. Okay, so here's my reflected light down here. Light's coming from here. Let's put in cast shadow coming off right here. And I just let my cast shadows kind of blur out that way. So my dull pencil is getting even duller yet. Uh, I might have to uh, sharpen it at some point soon because I'm kind of losing surface area on that thing. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to address this side of the background, remembering light on dark, dark on light for this lesson. Uh, at a future point, I'm going to show you ways in which artists leave light on dark, dark on light intentionally. Uh, so, so light on dark and then dark on light or vice versa. You could say dark on light, light on dark, dark on light, light on dark. Uh, the important thing is for us, we want to learn how to really pop this light off. So my midtone over here is very gentle and delicate. I feel like that got a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to go back in with my kneaded eraser, kind of pull back on it a little bit. Just like that. And I'll bring a little bit more shadow over here. A little bit more value, I should say. Now I can dig in. I can get that reflected light running the whole way. It's going to be strongest where it bounces and hits back. If those particles, remember we talked about light being, having the particles of light being matter, um, we'll leave it to the physicist to argue over whether it is or is not matter. But for us, it is matter and it bounces and it hits. So if that's the case, it's going to bounce and it's going to hit this strongest, just like a ball bouncing on the floor. It has the greatest acceleration right after it bounces. And as it goes higher, it loses velocity, right? So light comes in, bounces, but it doesn't have as much strength by the time it gets up here. So you can kind of let that taper out because if this is all that it's bouncing off of, it's going to hit that very hard, but it's going to hit that much softer. And so we see artists um, employ that gradient, that dissipation uh, all the time. Um, one artist who gr utilized that gradation right there from really bright reflected lights um, to softer reflected lights, just beautiful gradients, uh, is John Singer Sargent. Um, John Singer Sargent would use this on the underside of the chins of his portrait sitters, and the light would just gently dissipate as it made its way up their faces. Okay, so we have that sharp cast shadow right over here. And then as it goes away, um, it gets softer. Um, if I was being more literal with the highlight being right here, I probably would have moved my cast shadow a little bit more at this direction, but I don't want to bring the light too much in front of the object. So my drawing is not uh, is kind of violating the laws of physics a little bit, but I don't really care. Uh, it's just holding and serving the purpose uh, for illustrating a principle. Okay, so let's label this again. I'm going to grab, I'm actually going to grab a bigger pencil so that I can label quicker. Um, and of course, okay, here we go. So one, uh, background, two, external contour, three, half tone. Four, highlight. Five, half tone. Six, shadow shape. Seven, shadow. Eight, reflected light. Nine, cast shadow. Now, 
sand it out with that knife. Okay, 